Welcome. I am going to be installing OS2 Warp, which was a rival operating system to DOS and other things at the time. So we're going to start by creating a machine that would have been common around the era. And I'm going to start by clicking on a new, and I'm going to give it the name Typical OS2 Warp. Hello Dylan, how's it going? I'm going to click on OK. And did that add? No, it didn't. Let's try that again. Oh, no, it's frozen. It's fine. It means it's doing something. There we go. So, first of all, what kind of machine would you use? A bit of a 1996 machine, so we're talking 4x6s. So, let's go and have a look for uh, a ward. That tends to be a BIOS that I know quite well. I'm glad you enjoy my videos. Thank you for supporting the channel. I'm going to be generous and give it a DX266. Uh, it will have uh, 32 megabytes of memory. And we're going to have a different graphics card. So what do we have available here? Um, I'm going to go for something fairly standard, so maybe uh, an S3 Verge DX. No. What else can we have? Uh, could go for an ATI. Or something nice and generic. I don't want a Voodoo. Uh, yeah, let's go for the... Um, the S3 Trio 64, that was a pretty standard graphics card for the time. Thank you for popping by, Dylan, and thank you for your kind words. Uh, right, so, sound. Let's go for Sound Blaster 16, that's a good classic sound card. And of course we're going to need, uh, these will be, uh, I'll leave it at 2.88, that's fine. Um, we're going to be installing this from floppy disk, just to see what it was like to install things from a floppy disk. Uh, which should be dreadful, um, as I'm planning it. So uh, I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to call this OS2 Warp 4. And I'm going to give this um, 512 megabytes. Um, I'm afraid I don't play Call of Duty, no. Uh, drive created. I must remember to petition it. Uh, we'll just go with a standard Microsoft serial mouse. Uh, we'll, we'll bother with joysticks and I'll give it some um, uh, real tech networking. Uh, not that I know if OS2 Warp actually supports that. I'm just trying to be as generic as possible. So that looks pretty reasonable to me. Uh, DX66 uh, um, 32 gigs of memory, uh, we'll have a um, Phoenix S3 Trio 64, uh, Sound Blaster 16, we've got a 512 megabyte hard drive, we've got some floppy drives set up, and everything else looks pretty standard, so I'm going to click on OK, and see if it actually appears in my list. It has not appeared in my list. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, I'm not massively into games. I'll play them occasionally. But, uh, right, this program has crashed, so I'm going to try restarting it. Uh, right, let's close that down and run it again. Add another profile, OS2 warp, OK. Seems to be taking a longer time than normal. There we go. Uh, so we'll try that once again.
Seems to be a, a long delay in this. I'm not sure if it's because I'm screen recording or something else is going on. And I worked for the S3 Trio, didn't I? 64. Uh, we'll go Sound Blaster 16 and hard drive. I will open up my hard drive. I'll just make another one, it'll be easier. Uh, OS2, let's try that again. OS2 Warp 4 and 512 megabytes. Yep. Uh, mouse standard. And uh, network card. Okay. Now it's added. Okay. So we will now begin our journey. So we have a very classic BIOS. Now I'm actually going to need to load it with a disk. So I need to um, uh, change drive A. Yep, I know there's no boot disk. So if I head over to my old DOS folder, I should find OS2 warp. There we go. Now we've got to start with a floppy disk. So I'm going to go for installation disk and see if it loads from that. Ah, helps if I press enter. And there we go, we're now beginning our OS2 warp journey. Now it's just sitting there, flashing a cursor at me. It's identified, ah, oh, there we go. OS2 warp, this was released in 1996. So this was around the same time as well, Windows 95 was becoming popular and they were developing Windows 98. So insert disk 1. I don't know if disk 1 is inserted, so I'm just going to press enter and see what happens. Nope. Okay. Whoops, a daisy. Didn't want to do that one. So we want to go disk, change, and we'll see if that was disk 0. Yep, it was. Okay, so we want disk one. So now you're getting, well, without actually having the disks and slotting them in the drive, uh, a relatively <laughs> realistic idea of what it was like to install an entire operating system using nothing but floppy disks. Could I use a CD version? Yes, I could. Will I? No, I'm a masochist. So, and again, we're operating with 32 meg of RAM, uh, 486, 66DX2 processor. We're using S3 Trio, so we're talking a pretty old card here, and it should be simulating that kind of speed. Um, so this is basically what we did back in the day. You would sit there and wait for things to happen. Right, so now we're going to get disk 2. And... This probably takes roughly about the same amount of time it would to grab a disk from a pile, um, select the file, <laughs> select the disk and slot it in the drive. So, So it's now copying the data over from the next one. Actually, it's not even copying anything yet. All it's doing is loading things into memory. I think we should go for easy installation. Right, the hard disk partition is complete. The system must be restarted so the partitions can be uh, recognized during the system install. Remove the disk from drive A, insert the installation disklet in drive A, press enter key. Okay. Get rid of this thing. I need something else to alt and tab into. There we go. 
Right. Okay, fine, fine. I'll change it. Can I try tiny Windows 11? I don't like trying these um, alternative versions of Windows, shall we say. I do not trust any of them. Um, but I might dust off my old computer to uh, my, my blue one to give it a go at some point. But right now I find OS2 Warp a lot more interesting. So... Sit here, waiting for things to happen. Now, I never actually used OS2 Warp much. Um, I think I may have used it once or twice in my life. But mostly I was a DOS and Windows man back in the day. Right, so remove disk from drive A, insert disk 1. Okay. So disk, change disk. I, I, I feel I may be repeating a pattern here. Uh, okay. So disk 1 and enter. And what I can do is um, set up my live studio now. So it will now go into my emulator. And just while it's loading in the background. And I can turn this off. Now you should get a much cleaner um, view of what's going on. Right, so we want disk tool. So I'm now changing the disk. I think there's something like 30 floppies to go through. <laughs> oh, it's time for disc three. And again, this is very much the uh, <laughs> the experience of installing an OS on an old machine. Lots and lots of floppy disks. How many are there? Oh, geez, there is 39 of them, <laughs> not including printer drivers and stuff. This may take a while. Uh, this is indeed an emulator, so this is PCM version 17. And I am emulating a 486DX266 processor with 32 megabytes of RAM, a 512 megabyte hard drive, an S3 Trio 64 graphics card, and I am also using a Sound Blaster 16. Um, these are the hardware parameters where uh, we're emulating via various ROM files. Um, I'm using an Award BIOS, which seems to be one of the more stable ones. Uh, error occurs. System installation tried to format your fixed disk. Uh, the instruction program has failed due to error. To view the error, okay. Uh, to take action to correct this error, insert OS2 warp disklet. I assume that's zero. Hold down the um, control alt keys and then press delete. But okay, so he wants me to reset again. Okay, so let's have a look at the display log. Um, model FC, AIM BIOS, response file interface is being used. Um, greater than 100 primary partition exists. Okay, so it looks like my hard drive is too big. That's interesting. So what I need to do now is actually make a smaller hard drive. Um, 
yeah. Didn't see that one coming. Okay, uh, so I guess I start again. Uh, so system shut down. Okay, and we will change the parameters of our program. So I'm going to hide this one, show display, and you'll see how I'm fixing this. So basically I'll go in here, configure. So of course this was about the time when large hard drive support and things were coming into play. And apparently OS2 Warp wasn't quite there. Um, so I'm basically having to replace the hard drive. So we're going to have another one. And we're going to go 100 megabytes in size. In fact, I'm, I'm going to err on the side of caution. And I'm going to make it 96. And I'm going to call this OS2 Warp uh, 4 Tiny. And we're going to click on OK. And everything else should be fine. So we'll now restart this. And we will start again. So yes, back in the day, a whole 100 megabytes was considered massive. <laughs> um, right, I need to also change my disk. So change back to uh, the original installation disk. And system hard reset. And we'll turn this off. And this on. Is it actually going to display? Setting. And it wants me to select it again. Come on, Mr. Live Studio. You're a little bit slow. There we go. And we're going to click on the nice red icon when it appears. Not that you guys can see very much. I'm assuming this is booting in the background while I'm doing all this. Uh, yes, it is. There we go. So we're now back. We're, we, are we are working again. <laughs> uh, right, so now this, this is now the third time I've been through this procedure. And I'll have to go through it a fourth time. Um, I'm beginning to regret the floppy disk method and not going for CD-ROM. <laughs> But this is this is a, a very accurate portrayal of what we had to go through when installing old operating systems on old hardware. And again, there are 39 installation floppies. And so far, I haven't managed to get past floppy disk number three. <laughs> uh Just waiting for it to load up. So what it basically takes is the first three floppy disks and then it um, loads that into memory and that becomes the setup program. So OS2 warp was not a small thing by any means. Which is even more interesting when you consider it's limited to a 100 megabyte sized disk. So I'm now inserting disklet number two. And then we'll try the easy install again. <laughs> so now we are loading system files. I am once again going to go for easy installation. You would have thought that easy installation would have given the warning that it was too big. Hard drive partition incomplete. System must be restarted. Please insert the appropriate floppy drives. Okay. Uh, floppy drives, floppy disks, I mean. So we're going back to zero again. I have used zero quite a lot now. And now I will restart my machine by pressing the enter key. Could anything be more excited than installing a vintage OS?
The only thing I miss from this process, because it is emulated, is the sound of the drive reading things. Though that novelty does tend to wear off quite quickly as well. So, uh, uh, disk change. And we want disk one. So now we're actually loading up the installation program into memory, into our massive 32 megabytes of system RAM. You see, to be honest, the artwork wasn't too bad compared to what Windows... I suppose, no, Windows 95 was probably a little bit better. Um, from what I remember, this no, uh, actually no. Their their installation was mar largely text based at the time, so this is actually uh, a graphical uh, interface more or less. Right, put in the next disc. We've made it all the way to diskette number two of 39. <laughs> uh, this is very also, This is 96. So this is OS2 Warp. This is the uh, last official version that was ever released. So it was round about this. It was, it was sitting there in between Windows 95 and Windows 98. Um, right. Requires a minimum petition size. What are you talking about? It just said it was too big. What? So it just said over 100 megabytes was too large just now, and now it's saying it's too small. <laughs> okay. Nice to know it can't make up its mind. I guess we try again. Um... Yeah. Unless something else is going on. It says uh, you need at least uh, 350 meg. Not sure what to do right now, actually. All right, so let's try. Uh, we'll shut this down. And we will try the configuration again. So I definitely need 350 meg. So, I guess I'll give it a gig, see if that helps. Um, maybe it was misdetecting something. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Or maybe the easy installation is the issue. Maybe I should go into advanced. Uh, so, um, it's trying to stymie me. So, we'll bring this back online. So you can see me change the settings yet again. Now again, I was never an OS2 warp man. Um, I may have used it once or twice in my entire life. Uh, <laughs> so you're seeing here that I'm basically investigating this system for the first time um, as a, an installation guy. I have installed it once or twice before, but it was on different emulators. So. Uh, also, we got minimum there, so we'll eject that one. I'm going to create one with uh, uh, 10, uh, 10. Yeah, I'll give it that much. Uh, OS to warp large. We'll see if that works this time. This time, I'm not going to. Yeah. I'm not going to rely on the easy petition because that may be the bane of my existence right now. So let's try this again. We will now launch it. Disk change. And we want installation disk zero. And now I can go back in here. And of course, this won't work anymore because. TikTok is a pain in the butt as well and can't remember programs it previously selected. So you'll have to give me one moment while I select the appropriate window from the drop down. There we go. 
And now it's having a really good think about this. And you have to ask why it's so slow doing this, but never mind. Come on. So we're 25 minutes into the live and I haven't even managed to get past disc three yet. <laughs> uh, da -da -da. Right. It doesn't help that it takes at least two or three discs just to get into the installation. Uh, da -da -da. Right, there we go. Indeed, very good times. I may actually have to do some research into this one if it doesn't work this time around. That's a, that's a horrific thing to have to put on a man, researching technical problems that are, what, 30 years old? <laughs> well, not quite 30. Not far off, though. Right, so now we put in the next disk. File change. I'm glad you enjoy these kinds of lives. It's a bit like watching someone slowly torture themselves for no reason, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Well, actually, there's loads of us around. Um, I just don't think many on TikTok, to be honest. Internet modern time, very slow, 56 kilobits. Yes, I remember that. Right, let's go for advanced. Uh, right, this is intended for experienced technical users. You must make decisions about your computer setup. Well, I guess I'm curious at least to see what kind of decisions I have to make. Um, preparing the hard drive is a two-step process. The first step is petitioning defines one or more sorry defines one or more partitions on your hard drive the second step prepares the petitions to accept data if you select option one one partition which takes up the entire drive is created if you want more than one partition on the hard drive select two if you need further assistance refer to the os24 documentation for examples of petitioning the drive well, it's not. It's kind of not telling me that I have any size limits or anything. So I'm probably going to go with the predefined one, uh, on the basis that I don't really know what I'm doing anyway. So this probably is no different from the easy setup. Um, but I guess we'll find out. So, yeah, I guess I'm rebooting again now. Um, disk change, and we go back to zero. Do, do, do. and reboot I don't think I've done anything different I'm probably going to hit the same issue again uh, my work friend loves OS2 he doesn't like the MS product well he's obviously never tried to install it from floppy drive on an old machine <laughs> uh. is there a modern version of OS2 did it ever get developed beyond OS2 Uh, right, it's time to put in disk. Uh, that was disk uh, one. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm still way far back. We haven't even started copying files yet. I must say the um, the Windows installation is more user friendly, even though this is nicely graphically used out. You shouldn't really get stuck on something as simple as partitioning and formatting the drive. 
um, it should have, give you some more guidance. On the other hand, maybe they expect you to know what you're doing. On the other hand, that makes no sense because they have an easy mode. <laughs> so obviously they don't expect users to know what they're doing. Is OS 2 ahead somewhere versus Windows 3.1 that time? Um, OS 2 Warp 4 is very much closer to Windows uh, 95 in that era. Um, not in terms of code, obviously, but in terms of interface, from what I remember. It's, it's, it sits somewhere between Windows 3.1 and Windows 95, if I remember correctly. Uh, okay. Let's try again. It was disk. Oh, what number was it again? I think it was disk two. Yes, it's disk two. Okay, man. You can do it. I believe in you. I don't believe it's in it at all. I think it's doing something. I've pressed enter. Um, there's no progress bar or anything to indicate it's actually doing anything. <laughs> I would say the Windows 95 installation procedure is more user-friendly than this, to be fair. Though I'm not sure if it's doing anything right now. This is a two minute rule. Oh, maybe he thinks he's got the wrong disk. Let's try again. Okay, okay. That's because I hadn't selected the right disk. That's fair enough. But again, no error message, nothing saying, whoops, you still have the wrong disk in there, just a static screen, and nothing to even visually indicate if it's accepted the enter command. And this isn't a complaint, it's just an observation. It's interesting that the software is like this. So we're loading um, system software. I thought I did this. What, what what's happening now okay fine you know what <laughs> right remove diskette from a okay so we, we we're managing to get to disk three now this is as far as i've managed to get so far okay we have a beep Okay, does it think it's the wrong disk? I did put in three, didn't I? Oh, maybe I didn't go far enough. There we go. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay. Insert the right disk. Pro tip. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was seeing if there's a modern OS2 warp. Oh yeah, there's a tech support back in the day for this would have taken hours on a single phone call. Oh, see, so we got this error again. Right, error occurs, system installation, try to format your FIS disk. The installation program has failed due to error. To view the error, right, so we'll press enter, we'll see the log. Response interface not used, full pack installation greater than 175 primary partition exists. Formatting fixed disk. Right. So does that mean I need two petitions? I 
Okay, so are there any other options here? Let's read the rest of the screen. Take action to correct the error. Insert the OS2 warp disk into drive A. Hold down. Uh, yeah, it's asking me to reset. Um. <laughs> right, okay. I definitely need to go through some kind of manual process here. So I'm going to assume that I cannot have a, a primary partition greater than... 100 well, as they said 175 so if i make it um 174 <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's try that again um uh, i don't like this I, I i'm regretting this live now yeah okay that's fine just reboot ah uh, just 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 Arr, there's your control or D. You're happy now. Uh, first printing processor coming to for Cirix. I had the Cirix P150 Plus. That was my machine at the time. Um, because AMD was around, but they were slightly more expensive than IBM Cirix. And I've always been cheap. So it was uh, an IBM Cirix with an S3 Trio 64 graphics card and some kind of Sound Blaster product. I've, I've been through Sound Blaster 16, AWE 32, PCI 128. So I've had loads of Sound Blaster projects, products, I should say, over the years. Um, and of course, then sound cards got integrated into motherboards and we didn't have to bother anymore uh, yeah disc one. Oh, this live live may conclude with this man does not know how to install OS2 warp <laughs> uh, da, da, da. but yeah it, it gives you it, it, it does we do take for granted the way things have proceeded with a modern installation, you'd expect an error code, which you could then go online and look up, and you could probably fix it. Um, but I'm kind of guessing, based on the information they're really not giving me. Um, I mean, if this doesn't work, I'd always download the previous version, OS2 Warp 3. Uh, somewhere I have a Cirrus in the box. Yes, Sound Blast AWE coming a little later, yeah. I think I was on the Sound Blaster 16 around this time, but it may have been the Sound Blaster 2.0. I can't remember how old the card was in the system or if it got transported from another system. Because um, I know we went through a 486 machine phase. Um, but yeah, I remember sitting there going, oh, I got a Cirrus. I got all this performance for much less money than everyone else. And that kind of set up my entire attitude for IT. It's why I'm not an Apple user. It's because I look at Apple phones and I go, but this Android's cheaper and it does all the same things. <laughs> so yeah, it very much um, stemmed from the bargain hunting days I went through. Right, specify different drive or petition. When you option two, F disk, right, okay. Uh, so, when petitions the drive are modified, all data of the petition is deleted. Yep, 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 that's fine. Uh, okay, so now we got this thing. Um, okay. So what options? You know what? I'm just going to delete the petitions. Uh, delete petition. There we go. So we've got free space type. Um, I guess uh, I'm, I should probably just look this up online, but I kind of want to see if I can figure it out. Um, right, create petition. Uh, I'm going to create one that's... Uh, They said a maximum of 195, didn't they? So I'm going to give it um, 150. Let's see what happens with that. So that's going to be the primary petition. That's going to be at the start of the space. Then I'm going to create a secondary petition, which is going to be the rest of the space. 
which is going to be extended logical drive, I believe. Um, that is now marked as startable. So add to boot manager menu, I suspect. No. So is blue grayed out? Set installable. Uh, enter name, boot. So I'm guessing this is now the installable drive. Now, is there a format option? I don't see a format here. Okay, so we're going to... Do we just exit? There's there's no save, there's no write to. Um, so we'll try exit. Right, okay, so continue, save and exit. Okay. Drive petition is complete. Yes, okay. Yes, we, we, we know this message by now. I've got to go back to disk zero. And... We'll see if that makes any difference. Otherwise, I may have to do something terrible and actually go look up instructions. Okay, so we're on to disk one again. Apparently, the OS2 warp operating system didn't die. It went underground. Interesting. Apparently, someone does own OS2 warp. Run OS2 software today. Interesting. It's actually being developed. I'll have to research more into that later on. Hello. Alright. So we're going to go to disk 2. Okay, I could have sworn I put in disk two. Let's try that again. It seems to give a PC beep um, when it doesn't work, so it is actually giving some feedback. Let's try that again. There we go. But it would be nice if there was something visual on the screen saying wrong disk inserted or something just to flash a red warning or something i'm going to try advanced installation maybe that will give me some more options to solve stuff um, you what if you want to install multiple versions of DOS, OS2 Warp, and other operating systems on the same hard drive, refer to the OS2 documentation. Blah de, blah blah blah. If you have multiple um, partitions on your hard drive, select option two. Yep. So I will uh, OS2 Warp be installed to drive C. I'm going to specify. I've, oh no, I think I already did this, didn't I? Yeah, so I'm going to exit this. No partition with at least 100 megabytes was set installable. Press any key, okay. Oh, please don't tell me you restarted, thank you. Um, I'm going to accept C. 
Uh, let's see if it works now. <laughs> yeah, stop beeping at me. I know. Uh, uh, the most important thing about installation like this is patience and focus. Yeah. Uh, also, lots of tea. See, now, I, I definitely gave it the right disc. It seems to want to have it twice for some reason. There we go. Right, loading files. Let's see what happens now. Uh, that age, not much RAM. Original age computer BIOS must be right set up. Yeah, yeah. We have fun back in these days. Oh wow! Okay, so we're actually getting somewhere now. <laughs> um, should we go for the high performance file system? Yes, I am indeed live. I have been for the last 47 minutes. It's taken me 47 minutes to get this far on the installation process. And I still have um, an OS to install that requires 39 floppy disks. <laughs> 39. Oh... Uh. Right. Please wait while the uh, installation petition is formatted. Okay, so it seemed to like me going in there and manually creating a drive that was 150 megabytes in size. Um, I don't know what it's doing with the second partition. We'll find out later on, or it's going to fall flat on its face. Either way, that's interesting. Um, but it turns out that's the way to get past that error. Uh, whether or not... It will continue to get past that error and not fall on its face. I have no idea. Uh, but yes, that, that, that was an interestingly finicky setup I had to do there. You kind of had to know what you were doing before you got, went into this, and I didn't. And it's a little bit misleading because when you first booted, it says um, easy installation mode or easy partition mode. And you th I just selected that. I went forward. It didn't work. Um, I tried the easy installation method ah oh, there we go that 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 is now a thing of beauty it is actually copying files uh but yes so if you guys want to try os2 warp <laughs> um on pcm v17 when you create your petitions um do it on the advanced settings set Drive C to 150 megabytes. It seems to like that. Set it to startable and bootable. Um, and then just set the other one up as an extended. Uh, whether or not that's worked, I have no idea. But at least we are now progressing forward. <laughs> and it is starting to copy from the floppy disk. <laughs> um, HDD must be format, right? Fat, comp, manual, maybe help. Yes, computer manual would have helped. Unfortunately, I do not own such a thing. Yes, I could go online and look it up. But to be honest, this is how I tended to do things in the old days when I was starting out to be a computer technician. I would just fiddle with the software until I finally bent it to my will. Um, uh, uh, viewing a manual was a sign of weakness back in those days. <laughs> Uh, this is set to high performance file system, so if it isn't the right one, I'm probably screwed. So no, I did not select FAT. That may be the next major hurdle. But it is actually listing the C drive, so it's copying files over there. Um, and we're getting a very, yeah, bl bl blunt force approach, as to be honest, um, summarise my entire career. <laughs> I could do things smarter, but often I just don't. I just try to get on with it as best I can um, and either have some fun or get very frustrated and then go and look in the manual. Yes, there have been part times when uh, going to look in the manual first would have saved me a lot of effort. 
Um, but on the other hand, I've also saved a lot of time by not going through the manual and just getting on with it. So it's a toss up. <laughs> So again, guys, it is now copying files at normal floppy disk speeds on a 48666 megahertz computer, 32 megs of RAM, and I have 39 disks to install. Well, actually, no, that's not true, because I'm on disk 4 now. So I guess, you know, I only have, um, I have to do basic math now, uh, 36 disks to install. Yay. I have tried to VM Android, but I can't get it to work. Um, Windows 11 comes with an Android virtual machine. I just use that. But it depends what platform and software you're using. This one seems to be going a little bit faster. Now, it's a case of if you have lots and lots of small files, it was slower to copy stuff. But if you have one big one, it will copy over faster. And you'll also notice that whereas these days with modern software, you would copy over a large compressed file like a zip. And then you would then proceed to extract that directly to the hard drive, which is a lot faster than what we're doing, which is copying uncompressed files from a floppy disk onto um, a hard drive. So, But then we also had um, so little processing power that it was kind of a toss-up. Um, do you make files very small, but then take a long time to decompress them? Or do you just put them all on floppy disks and just copy them straight? And obviously with OS2 Warp, they decided just to put it on floppy disks straight. Um, so, uh, yeah. Steam uses a simple thing, uses a pack files, not a zip. Yep. I mean, pack files are an old thing. They came from um, the Quake days. Um, we were dealing with pack files back then. Now, whether or not it's the same format and compression standard, I have no idea. But um, yeah, yeah, pack goes all the way back to the Quake days, I think. Good double check that because I may may actually be. Um... No, no, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Quake PK files, yeah, yeah, yeah. I spent a lot of time. Um, editing pack files um, because it was a way of modding Quake back then. But having said that, again, just because it's got the PAK file extension doesn't mean it's um, it's uh, the same compression that was used back then. It's just that the, the file name triggered a memory. So. Uh, Oh, so you 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 are you are literally live getting the um, experience of installing stuff from floppy disks. Now, because um, these are images on my hard drive that I try to verify as best I can. Um, in theory, we shouldn't have the corrupt disk in a pack of thirty six disk situation. <laughs> where you then have to go and try and find your backup copy of that disk or find a mate who also has a software and get them to copy the floppy for you. Um, so hopefully we'll avoid all of that. <laughs> but um, yes, we are now installing an entire operating system um, from floppy disks. Uh, each one has a capacity of 1.44 megabytes in size and they're, they're not compressing files or anything by the look of it. Now, actually, Microsoft at the time were using something different. They were actually using CAB files. I'm going to verify that because I'm sure Windows 95 used CAB files. And Windows 3.1 may have used CAB files too. Um, come on, come on, come on, come on. Thank you. So we want disk 5. So 
So now we're, we're copying disk five. Now it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity if you ever wanted to just look at the screen and see what all the file names are. Um, because there are only um, eight character file names, you kind of have to infer uh, what they are. But uh, I mean, if, if nothing else, you can say by this installation method, you get to individually read every single file that goes into the operating system, which you certainly can't do these days. What was I going to look up? Cab files. So cab files were Microsoft's compression method at the time. Uh, Windows 95. Yep, yep. So dot cab files were the compressed um, files that Microsoft used to use. So while OS2 warp seems to just to be um copying files straight um microsoft was using .cab files to copy things over and extract i had blade runner for the first time um i had blade runner when it first came out for cd rom uh, one scratch and it was a nightmare. <laughs> oh yeah, it's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> now I'm assuming that was a Blade Runner game and not the Blade Runner movie, um, because I I used to have some of those uh, CD movies. Um, I think I had uh, Star Trek Generations on VCD, um, and because you couldn't actually fit a whole movie onto a single um, CD-ROM. You actually had two CDs in the packet because, uh, of course, the maximum size you put on there was 650. Uh, for a two-hour movie with MPEG-1 compression, you couldn't really get it down with the same amount of quality. Um, but even then, it was amazing how bad the quality of the movie was. It was artifacty. It was... Oh, it was, it was, it was terrible. But, um, yeah, yeah. V video CDs were a thing. And you had to stop halfway through the movie and swap out the CD. And it was basically just playing a, a compressed MPEG file. So there, there, there's a little childhood memory that just came up. Well, we're on disk six now. You know, the, the real danger here is right next to change CD, sorry, it's change um, drive A is another menu with hard reset. So if I'm not careful, I could actually end up resetting the machine <laughs> instead of changing the the, the, the floppy disk. Um, I should I should probably bring that up. <laughs> Excuse me, could you put the disk changer well away from the reset button? Yes, it's in another menu, but yes, it's also very easy to uh, to 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 accidentally do. Um, and I'll, I'll actually I'll show you what I mean very quickly. Um, so we'll just disable this momentarily and I'll put you on full display mode. Um, but what I'm saying is every time I have to change it, I go to disk and then change A. And just now I accidentally went over slightly. Excuse me. I accidentally leaned over slightly and triggered this one. And the very first one is hard reset. <laughs> so all you got to do is go, whoops. And you reset the computer instead of changing a drive. <laughs> and I can't actually, I don't think it actually um, gives you a, uh, are you sure you want to do this message? I think it just resets the machine. So uh, let's, let's hope I don't do this <laughs> stupid thing. <laughs> oh. Uh, first Amiga 500 computer. If you load disk, no HDD, always must use disk. Yeah. Yeah, I had an Atari ST. We didn't have a hard drive for that. You had to boot up off um, your collection of floppy drives in order to access the... Uh, I keep saying floppy drives. You, 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 keep, you, you had to put in your floppy disk into your drive. <laughs> Uh, and that was how you started the machine up. And if that floppy disk was corrupted, because, of course, you're using your favourite game quite a lot, then you had to go and dig through a, a, a pile of um, 
of other ones, but um, on the Atari ST, you had copyright protection on these um, on some discs, so you couldn't actually back up your own software for whatever reason. Um, <laughs> I don't think it happened that often, but uh, it was definitely possible to. Uh, yeah, stop beeping at me. Stop beeping at me. It's fine. Uh, right, I want to double check disk seven. Okay. Now let's get the right menu. Thank you. We're now copying the next one. Uh, I can't remember what I was saying now. Uh, yes, yeah, so you you couldn't copy all floppy disks. Um, I don't know what they used for copy protection back then because I was a kid and I didn't really understand it all. All I knew is I couldn't back up some of my games and when that disc got ruined, that was it. I think there were some companies you could write to or call their tech support and they would actually send you out a replacement disc. Um, but uh, yeah, calling these companies was expensive back then. But I never had the Amiga. Um, a lot of people seem to go the Amiga route, and at that time I was on the Atari ST. Um, my father was a... I don't know why he was a big Atari man, probably because they were cheaper. That was basically the theme of my childhood, going to adulthood, was why get the expensive thing when you can get the cheaper thing? And <laughs> I, I want to see what the prices were. Uh, how many discs are there on this installation? <coughs> 39. 39 floppy disks. I'll just let you absorb that information. 39. And there's a bunch of other discs in the folder as well. Um, for, um, I should, I should just, I should just show you the folder. You know what? Let's bring the folder up. This, this should scare you. Uh, Right, you can't see what I'm doing now, but I am actually trying to find the folder. Uh, uh, OS tool warp, where are you? Right, let's get that set up nicely. Right, um, I need to not list it like that. Uh, view by, uh, I think I'll stick small icons on this one just because there's that many files in this directory right um i'm just gonna swap this floppy while i'm doing things so they want disk eight uh, do, 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 do. uh to be honest this this is kind of the point of the live is just to um to show people what it was like installing <laughs> Large software on a 486 machine. Uh, that age before DVD needs a lot of disk. <laughs> yes, word perfect, 12 discs. <laughs> um, right, I'm going to bring up the uh, the other one again. Right, so that's now full screen. Um, if I go back over to TikTok, I can swap over my doodars. Uh, there we go. And we'll hide this one. We'll show this one, minimize this. Uh, anyway, the, these are all the floppy disks. There you go. So there are 112 floppy disks. Now, they're not all installation disks. You've got things like WinOS 2, no idea what that is. Printer drivers, symbol disks. We have FL, I don't know what FL is. But there's another 49 FL discs. D I have no idea what that is. Uh, and we got um, uh, five discs of just display drivers. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I have no idea how many of these are going to be needed. It may end up being a lot more than 36, so, sorry, 39 discs. <laughs> But the, these are the installation floppies, and as you can see, 39. Actually, no, I, I'm wrong. There's 40 disks because they're using old computer methods, which is they start at zero. That means there's 40 floppy disks. <laughs> oh, 
Why am I doing this? Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I'm I'm kind of regretting this. And, and and it took me 47 minutes just to get past the first three floppy disks because um the the the, the easy installation turned out wasn't that easy. <laughs> Oh, so we're going to have um, Diskette 9 now. Which puts us one, well, nearly one quarter through the process. Yes, why OS 2? I have a better question for you. Why not? No internet. They need a lot of driver library. Yes, exactly. Um, but they wanted to cover their basis. And obviously... the Now, it, it says something about their willingness to support various hardware. Um, and I imagine that uh, devices that came after um, OS2 Warp uh, was released would come with their own drivers. But, uh, yeah... <laughs> Lots of driver library. <laughs> and it may even be the fact that they had to support all these things because most people were install were, were supporting DOS and um uh and Windows. So there may just not have been a lot of people who were willing to support um IBM. Maybe they had to write a lot of their own drivers. I, I I'm not sure what the story is, to be honest. Now, it is really interesting that there is a company now that actually owns OS2 Warp and they are still developing it. So I was just checking it. Um... What is the end goal here? The end goal is to make a live stream showing what it was like to install an entire operating system from floppy drives and absolutely no training whatsoever. I am purely making video content. That is my goal here. And it's showing people, you know, that you... I don't know. It's just fun as well. So this takes me back to my, uh, my teenage years. Please install, please insert disk number whatever. <laughs> but I have to admit, there is a sense of satisfaction. When you get through something like this, you have spent hours on your ass solving problems, swapping out floppy disks. You feel like you have just earned what you've just done. <laughs> you don't get that now. It's just like, you know, do a factory reset on the PC. It takes you, what, five minutes to reinstall an OS. It's just done. <laughs> if, if you want to reset the OS on your Android phone, you just do a factory reset. It just sits there and does it itself. Um, this, this, uh, what that OS have a browser? Um, I think OS2 Warp did have a browser. I think it was Netscape. Old school content. Old working five miles uphill, Brit. <laughs> uh, this is memories for me. I've sat in front of so many of these screens installing Doom, Quake. Um, Duke Nukem used this kind of installer. Um, <laughs> and it was all sitting there, casually flopping out discs. It wasn't a case of um, grab a CD or click on Steam and, you know, wait a short time for it to download and then just hit play. You really had to earn what you played. <laughs> and it, I think it made you play the games that much harder because you, you do not waste that much time getting something installed and then go, oh, this is boring, and then move on to the next one. Uh, first, OS2 needed separate install for internet. Uh, this is OS2.4, so I don't know what the networking situation is like for this. Um, I have a couple of different network adaption options. I've used the Realtek one, 
um, but there is also um, a Novell um, 2000 uh, communication, so you may need that. I'm not sure. Um, yes, it's all translate Finnish language. In yes, and this all translated from a Finnish language installation manual. Yes, yes. Okay, we got the next one coming up now. Beep, beep. And we are now proceeding on to disc 11, which marks the one quarter point. Oh, come on. I just fed you the disc. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you making me insert it twice? Try that again. Come on. I, I fed you. Continue copying. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, me too. Started with a Timex Sinclair 1000. Nice. Nice. You can respect a man who goes back that far. Um, Warp had internet. It probably did. Uh, Windows... Actually, no. Windows 95 didn't really have internet, did it? It was Windows 98 that brought in the internet. Uh, or did it? It might well have done, actually. I don't know. I'm confusing myself. Yes, it did, because Windows 3.11 had the internet. I remember it. Because uh, that had the Netscape browser. Uh, did Internet Explorer start with Windows 95? I know it got included with Windows 98, but I'm not sure if it was included with Windows 95. Because they started integrating... Um, uh, yeah, so uh, in 1995, Microsoft released Internet Explorer 1.0. Um, but I don't think... Ah, it was, it was part of the bonus pack for Windows 95. So in the original, the, the, there was no web browser. Yeah. So in the original Windows 95, there was no web browser. Um, I remember using um, Netscape. Not Yes, yes, Netscape. IBM commercial says, goes warp speed, you work. <laughs> yes, in real life chat options. Um, the beauty of the doubt. <laughs> oh, it's going back a few years, man, come on. I barely remember what I did last week. Uh, but it, it surprises me that I can remember anything from when I was, what, 16? I would have been 16 when this thing released. Um, I would have come across it when I was around 18 because we never got any new software in our family. Um, but I, 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 I wouldn't have actually had it for my father because I actually moved out by the time I was 17. I was, I was earning a wage by 18. In fact, my first job was with um, um, ICL and SIGCUP, which were running the Windows uh, 98 support team. And they were so desperate for people, they were literally just yanking anyone off the street to do it. Um, oh, I almost, I almost clicked on system then and the reset. Um, I almost wonder what would happen uh, if the setup got interrupted. Would it actually resume? But let's not find out. That, that That's an experiment for another day. Oh, ICQ. I remember ICQ. We, we, we had warnings in the office basically saying, you're not allowed to use ICQ while you work <laughs> because people were getting distracted by it. <laughs> It's ICQ still a thing. Uh, remove the disk. Reinsert. Oh, the, okay. Reinsert the OS24 warp installation disk into A. So it's not asking for the next disk. Does that mean it doesn't need all 39 of them? Or 40? Okay. I'm going to give it disk 0 again. I think that's what it wants. Reinsert the OS24 installation disk into drive A. Press enter. So what's going on now? Oh, okay, it's just continuing to copy file. Okay. <laughs> That's weird. Oh, I love that. You now have plug-and-play support. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. You now have plug-and-play support. OS2 Warp can automatically detect and allocate resources for your devices during installation. You can use Hardware Manager, and I can't read it all because I'm too slow. Okay, so... Why is it... Okay, so is it just putting data off the first... What? 
This is so weird. So we, we got up to disc 11, and now it's like asking for the first first two discs again. Um, okay. Here's disc one. Okay, so you are, you are copying things over. Interesting. Yes, Windows 95 ISDN connection. 126 kilobit. Cost around 20 euros a month. Nice. I did not use any ISDN connections back then. I literally went from dial-up to broadband. Um, and I think, actually, my broadband connection, my first one, was about the same speed. Um, it was a Virgin Media connection, if I remember correctly. And I believe that was about 128k as well. Um, no, it wasn't Virgin Internet back then. It would have been NTL. I'm going to see what the speed was back in. It would have been 96. That would have been around 2000. So I would have been in Cardiff at the time. So I think that was around 1999, actually. NTL Incorporated. Uh, what was the broadband speed in 1999? Um, now, I never had 10 megabits. I know that much. I was much slower. I might have had half a megabyte or something. And I considered that so fast at the time. Wow, you could actually download images without seeing it aligned at the time. What? 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 I, I, I still don't know why it wants to first. I, I really hope it's not starting from the beginning so somehow. <laughs> I just end up in this infinite loop of installing the first 11 discs and never get any further. This may actually be my nightmare. Am I actually awake? <laughs> Actually, I know I'm awake because I don't have a boss screaming at me. Why is it installed yet? ASDL. That was the connection I had back then. That's right. Now, they're actually listing American speeds. It was different. That's the one. 512 kilobit service was available in all NTL. Yeah, I remember this pricing. twenty four ninety nine a month to get... Um, half a megabyte of service. That was the package I had. That was ten times faster than my, 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 my dial-up modem. Right, remove the diskette, press enter to continue with installation. So just remove diskette. So I, I assume it's going to reboot now. So maybe it just needed the first 11 disks. Um, maybe it actually goes into a graphical thing. I don't know. I'm guessing. Right, eject drive A, press enter. Now, guys, would you care to take bets on how badly this is going to go wrong and how it's going to go wrong? There we go. Yep. Yep. Okay. Freaking knew it. It won't boot. <laughs> Oh. Okay. Okay. Um. Um. <laughs> I, I guess I insert disc A. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. You are getting the real life experience of installing software in the 90s. Uh, let, let, let's see if it does any um, troubleshooting like Windows would have done. Or is he just going to ask me to, you know, do something else? Maybe I have to do something. You know what? I might have to make it bootable from um, um, FDisk. It would be so nice if they just put a simple installation method on one floppy. The fact that you have to load multiple floppies just to reach the initial <laughs> installation 
is 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 quite painful actually. Uh, okay, here's disc one. Have disc one. And people wondered why it took a week to install software. I know, right? <laughs> uh, now I can go to the senior house. All important, it seems. <laughs> oh. Now, I'm hoping that it was... Because the petition must have been created. The um, files were copying over to a partition drive. So it's probably going to be a boot sector thing. And it will probably turn out that the person who said I should have chosen FAT earlier was correct. And it was a high performance file system that caused this issue. I'm completely theorizing. I don't know. Um, but I'm trying to work out in my head what the possibilities are and what's the most likely. Um... This is like an eight-hour stream now. Well, I guarantee it won't last eight hours because I've got to work tomorrow. <laughs> um, this may just be entitled He Can't Install OS 2.4 Walk because he's useless. Um, right. But yeah, I, I can see why Windows would have been the more popular option if this is your first introduction to the operating system. Because to be fair, DOS installation, pretty straightforward. Windows 3.1, very straightforward. I've never had any major issues installing it. Windows 95, again, I've installed it from floppy disk. Um, begin the installation the following way. We go for advanced. I could go to command prompt, but that is another thing for later. Um... I think I need FDisk. Right, select a drive or petition. Uh, when petitions modify all data on those, yes, I'm aware. So let's try not to delete any data. Let's see if I can just... Right, because there's no bootable on that. Make startable. Add to boot. Let's see, that's greyed out, so I can't do anything like that. Install boot manager. Okay, so there is a, a boot manager to install. Set installable, no. So I'm kind of lacking options here. Uh, if these weren't greyed out, it would be very useful. Okay, so is this something here I can do? No, I've got very limited options. Interesting. So is there another way? Right, petition with at least, that's fine. I don't actually want to write to it. Um, I wonder... Right, F3 command prompt. Now, does C exist? Yes, C exists. So we definitely have files copied over there. So the issue here that this is not bootable. So how do I make an OS2 drive bootable? This is why I actually have to do a bit of research. Seems like you may need to start from scratch. If that happens, I'll probably be doing this live another day. So I'm going to try some troubleshooting. Right, OS2 warp 4, HDD not bootable.
using OS2 Warp to install multiple. No. I think it's the boot manager I need. So how do I access the boot manager? Probably need a petition only for the boot. I've got the petition. Everything's copied. Um, so I need to mark it as a bootable petition and I need something in the boot sector to load a boot manager. So I know that much. I'm just trying to remember how you do. In DOS, this would be easy. You just do a format. No, you just do, um, yeah, a format slash S would copy over the system files required. So is it going to be a petition thing? Uh, right. What tools do I have available? Disk boot, five file system, F disk. F disk is available here. Now I need to be careful not to write. Okay, so it's a graphical interface, F disk, that's fine. Right, so install boot manager is grayed out. Boot manager disabled. Uh, this is an old school demo of how it was to install um, an OS back in the day. Yes. <laughs> and it's, it's quite funny that I got a large number of posts here. One started with, I've tried, but it. I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is literally the title of one of these. Someone just giving up. Um, getting the boot. The boot manager cannot be installed on the second or first drive because the ROM will not load on an MBR on anything. Ooh. Slash MBR. Can I do a master boot record right? Uh... That's right. Maybe I did need to write this as fat. That may be what's happened here. Um, because this is basically DOS. So this is my field. Don't want to delete the petition. I just don't understand why these things are greyed out. They might be the um, um, HSFP. So if I format, right, let's exit this. And let's um, format um, Will it show up as D? Yes, it does. Uh, now, it should not, right, that, that's, that's what I thought. So, A, format, D, colon. Uh, name, recognize, and internal. Okay, so let's find out what the, no, or is it minus H on this? Come on, give me help. Okay. Oh, does format even exist? Is there a format here? Got an F disk, but there's no format. Okay. So we've got a command file there. CD boot, review, mouse T edit. Uh, is there anything useful here? Sys init two. DOS dot sys, so he's running the DOS. Sys install one. Maybe I can bypass it. Uh, let's try um, sys install two. No, that's too long. Where was it again? I've missed it. Sys inst two. Right, okay. So I'm bypassing the first installation run. Now we're into the advanced installation. Okay. So advanced installation. 
Uh, right, let's accept and let's see if we get the option to format. Um, okay, so you're asking for disk three, that's fine. Uh, change disk A to disk three. Do, do, do. Yes, I think you'll probably be right. It probably is the fact that I didn't um, write it as a fat petition. Um, so that's probably my dumbass move there. That would also explain the size limitations on that drive. But it's interesting, again, in the installation process, it didn't mention anything about... Oh, by the way, you can't boot off this one if you checked it. It's just like, it really does rely on you knowing things. Um, yes, I wanted to format the petition, and this time we'll go with fat. Okay, we'll lose the data. That's fine. So I'm going to click on enter. means I've got to go through a 10 disk installation process again. Um, if it doesn't work, that's where I end up. <laughs> that's why I'll end the live. <laughs> uh, and then I'll go and do some research. But we'll find out if the next 10 disks will be installed and it will work. <laughs> Yes, this is indeed a very old school demo of how it was installed back in the day. All the troubleshooting. Um, I, I couldn't find any information. I did do a Google, um, but the postings were so vague, it wasn't useful. Um, right, so that's formatted now. Yeah, high, high performance file systems probably, as you say, for uh, um, the storage of files elsewhere. But it's, it's just so it's, it's so naturally unintuitive. That's what's so impressive with this installation. Oh, Alexa, lights on. I didn't even notice it was dark in this room. I've got one lamp on my desk. It's not good for my eyes to be sitting there in the dark staring at a screen. So some kind of differences um, between Win, I remember that, um, handle HDD, yeah. Well, Windows just used FAT, and FAT32 didn't come out until um, Windows 95 OSR2. Um, I was quite excited when that happened, because it, it meant you could actually use your massive hard drive, but there were size limitations. Um, but yeah, it makes sense that I was getting error messages earlier, um, that the drive was too big. Um, and if it's limited to fat for boot purposes, that's why it will be too big. But one good thing of my poking around the floppy disk did help. Uh, one good thing of me poking around the floppy disk file structure was I realised that it had two installation files uh, or two installation programs to run. And when I ran the second one, it meant I skipped the, ha the need for having to put floppy zero in, floppy one in, then floppy two in. I could actually just start the second part of the process directly from floppy two. So that was good. Windows NT doesn't like big drives. No, it didn't. Um, and again, this was right on the cusp between 16-bit and 32-bit technology. And we had the same thing years later when AMD swapped over from um, um, 32 to 64-bit process technology. It just allowed more access to RAM and hard drive space. Um, but yeah, the old uh, FAT16 file tables, um, I can't remember what the size limitation was, but I think it was pretty small. I'm going to have a look now. Uh, but I'm going to swap this floppy disk first so I can do research in between copying. Uh, do, 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 do. Now the, the the other weird thing is as you were using as you were um, swapping floppy disks around, when you first start, 
you sit there staring at the screen and it seems to take forever. But as you end up on disc um, uh, 10 or whatever, after restarting the process a dozen times, it seems to go faster. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I think there's just a survival mechanism in the brain that stops you concentrating on this progress bar going ever farther forward. And you just sort of drift off into your own zen-like state where you, ha you, you have time to ponder the world and enjoy a cup of tea and suddenly it doesn't matter if this disc is taking forever to install because you just wait for that beep, you pop another one in there. Now, the alternative to everything I just said is that you go absolutely nuts and jump out a window. But most people go into the Zen state, I find. So, FAT16 max um, partition size. Four gig. Okay, that's bigger than I thought it was. Oh, FAT12 was only 256 gig. It wouldn't be using FAT12, would it? Might be, I suppose. So, yeah, so FAT12 had a uh, 256 megabyte limit. FAT16 had a 4 gig limit. And, of course, FAT32 had a 2 terabyte limit. Uh, which would actually go up to 4, yeah, 4 gig with the 512 mega sectors. Interesting. And of course, we're on NTFS now, so we don't have those old um, FAT32 issues. See? Yeah, I, I've, I, I've barely noticed this floppy disk copying. Um, it's almost at 100% before I notice, because now my brain is just wandering off on the problems of the world. And I think this is how geniuses are born. They, they, they get to have the Zen experience of watching a file transfer happening, and you get to think about everything in the world and solve the world's problems. <laughs> uh, maybe there is something to say to uh, where, where something like this actually forces you to slow down and idle, because you're doing something important, but now you can actually think about things as well. Uh, and I do notice that people tend to uh, distract themselves constantly. They, they can't sort of sit down for five minutes and not do something. Uh, they're on their phone, they're watching television, they've got the music on or whatever. Um, honestly, I would just sit in a room watching this happen, just thinking about stuff. And that that was a lot of my um, my, my teenage years. <laughs> I think the disc changes were just to keep you awake. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, because you, you did, I mean, you, you pick up a book and you could read it. Um, I went through a number of novels just sitting here waiting for this install. Hear the beat, put your book down, swap the disc out, pick your book up again, continue reading. Oh. Almost there. Come on. Finish copying your code pages. Finish copying your code pages. So basically, it's taken me one hour and 40 minutes to be halfway through the first set of installations I did. <laughs> and it does not seem to have a resume mode. Because um, it would have resumed earlier if it did, but it doesn't, so yeah. Yeah, you don't want to reset your machine by accident. You'll be starting again. Early time hours and hours thinking, why net not work browser open? <laughs> oh. You almost start bargaining with yourself. You, say, you sort of say things like, well... It's not that you're only 12.5% through the process. It's that you're halfway through the process as to where it failed last time. So you set yourself different goalposts. You start negotiating with reality. <laughs> Perhaps I should start a Zen meditation based around floppy disk software installations. 
turn it into a yoga practice. Well, maybe I'm just talking absolute bollocks because I'm swapping out a load of boring floppy disks and it's just easier to deny reality. That's another possibility. Uh, I think I've actually run out of things to say at this point. <laughs> Uh, it's been an hour and 41 minutes, and I still am no closer to getting this thing installed, probably. Yeah, like I say, if it fails after um, um, the next five discs are done, that's going to be the end of the live. I warn you now. But if it succeeds, I'll be stuck here installing even longer. I'm not sure which one to hope for now. Similarities... Um, to Unix and Xenix. I think Xenix was the one done by Microsoft, wasn't it? Was that them or someone else? I never actually used it myself. Oh yeah, it was Microsoft, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they made a, a Unix-compatible operating system. Yay! Disk 6! My life, once again, has meaning. For the entire duration, it takes for me to swap a floppy disk. Uh, da -da -da -da. Enter. Imagine the Zen state of installing OS2 Warp on a 200 Compaq 286 LE laptops for a company in 1992. Hmm. I suspect if I had to do that, I would have solved all the world's problems and then forgot about it immediately when I had to do the next floppy disk installation. In my first IT job, I managed to kill customers' sight by turning the power... Um, by per by turning on the power to an OS2 box. Nice. Uh, yeah, I imagine you weren't very popular that day. <laughs> hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, I I I imagine the um uh, the rioters were fairly extreme at that point. It never came back up. <laughs> oh, I have to admit, um, if, if there was a situation, it never actually happened, but there's a situation where I tripped over a plug or something and, and the computer failed halfway through installation but someone was out of the office, I, I, I would just um, skedaddle and pretend I was never there. <laughs> <laughs> Halfway through disk six. Uh, did you know you can play TikTok streams in VLC and it hasn't got delay? Doesn't surprise me. I think TikTok's um, general interface is pretty inefficient, to be honest. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. And if you're playing it through VLC, you'll be getting it directly from the um, RT protocol, won't you? So you won't be going through all there. Add the chat. Add these features. Uh, number seven. And enter. Uh, I see only my friend use OS2 Warp to use Photo Catalog. Nice. NTFS, that's a good name right there. Um, what's worse than IBM OS2 Warp? IBM PS2 computers. <laughs> They're all right. They did the job. 
<laughs> uh, turned out I was plugged in on a um, a board graphics. Or oh, turned out I was plugged into on board graphics. Okay. You have warp. I do indeed have warp. And it is slowly failing to install in unique and interesting ways. So far, this has been the operating system from hell. Micro channel architecture, token ring cards. I remember token ring cards. Oh, geez. Token ring networks. That was the thing. They're a pain in the ass, they were. Ne was NetBuey token ring? I can't remember. But that was a protocol I used a lot. Microsoft's IBM code source sharing deal remains. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not sure why uh, Microsoft would want to, uh, to share the code from OS2 Warp, but um, it's nice they have that option. Now, I'm assuming the, the code sharing deal goes beyond that, of course. I'm just being silly. Using those LAN parties. Yep. NetBuey is what I used to use. I think it was on a Novell 2000 network adapter. Um, was uh, how we played Command and Conquer in my house. We had like two or three computers. No, we had two computers at the time with our own private LAN network. And we used to take it in turns to fight each other. Sit in there with um, like as many mammoth tanks as you can build and just rolling over your brother's hopes and dreams. Testing. Testing, one, two, three. Is this thing on? Text not good enough. Uh, I have to admit, our main way of sharing information um, when we were playing Command and Conquer over the network was to scream at each other from a, for, from across the landing or down the stairs. Most games went, Are you online yet? What? Are you online yet? I can't hear you! <laughs> uh, Windows NT is basically modern OS 2. Well, no, because um, Windows NT was a complete departure from 16-bit coding. It was completely redone in 32-bit. Um, whereas I believe OS2 Warp still had a large amount of 16-bit components in it. I don't think um, OS2 Warp was pure 32-bit um, code. Just seeing now. Right, that's an emulator. I want I want information about the old stuff. Come on. Give me old knowledge. I have to start my own uh, own blog. And doesn't actually say. Uh yeah, it, it had thirty two bit code. Oh, that's an emulator. That's nothing to do with that. Uh, it was a reliable, efficient 32-bit OS. It offered excellent compatibility with DOS and Windows 3.1 applications. You know what? I never knew that. I did not know that OS2 Warp actually ran um, Windows 3.1 applications. Now, if it runs Windows 3.1 applications, it's definitely not pure 32-bit because those were 16-bit apps. We used to lug our desktops and monitors to a friend's house, set up a LAN, and play Quake. Yep, um, I was in the workplace at that point, so whenever um, um, the workday was finished, it was time to load up the office computers on the network and uh, install illicit copies of Quake so we could fight each other for hours after work. <laughs> have you read... Um, you have Eve, the red parable of OS2. I'm assuming that's ever. Have you ever read the parable of OS2? No, I have not. Um, 
Glad the days of 16-bit are long gone. 16-bit <laughs> did its job. It was fine. Also, I started on 8-bit computers, so to me, 16-bit was a major upgrade. Thank you very much. No, I tell a lie. Um, the, I was on the Atari 400. I'm pretty, was that a 4-bit machine or an 8-bit machine? I can't remember. Atari... 400. Bits. Yeah, it was 8-bit. Yeah. Yeah, so my first machine was an 8-bit. So 16-bit was a massive upgrade. You, you had GUI, so you didn't have to type things into a, a, a basic prompt to get things done. Um, now, I, to be fair, I never came in on the 4-bit on the computer era. Um, I came in on the 8-bit computer era. Um, so if you remember 4-bit uh, computers and you remember machines older than... Now, actually, I've got a friend, um, Steve Waddell. Uh, he... I think it was the, um, are you speaking with A? Can't remember the name. But it's the one with all the switches on the front. Uh, so he's, he's told me about, he's told me stories about that computer many times. There's most definitely substantial shared source code between OS2 and Windows. Uh, but which Windows did they share code to? Was it NT? Because um, this was Windows 95 uh, era. So Windows NT, when did that come out? Actually, when did it start development? Oh, we're on disk 10. We're, we're, we're approaching the point of previous failure. Though if I remember, it's going to actually get to disk 11. And then it's going to um, ask me to insert disk one, two, and three again. <laughs> when did Windows NT start development? Windows NT start development. Uh, Microsoft decided to create a portable operating system compatible with... Oh, so Microsoft decided to create a portable operating system compatible with OS2 and POSIX while supporting multiprocessing in October 1988. When development started in November 1989, Windows NT was to be known as OS2 3.0. Oh, that's interesting. The third version of the operating system developed jointly by Microsoft and Windows and, and IBM. Okay, so there I did not know that. OS2 Warp was based on Windows NT. Which means it would have been pure code, wouldn't it? But it also compatible with um, Windows 3.1 apps. That's interesting as well, because that means it wouldn't have been pure 32-bit. Because it would have had to support the 16-bit stuff. You know what? I never realised that. I always thought Windows NT was a completely different project. OS2 Warp is not going well. I have been at this stream for nearly two hours and I'm still on disk 10. <laughs> I've had to restart this because I managed to get it installed, but Altair 8800, that's the one. Thank you. That's the one I was talking about. Um, but yes, no, this installation is not going well. <laughs> Windows NT started life as NT OS 2. It can be, um, except Windows NT wasn't. I might, mind you, I might actually be thinking of Windows NT 5 and Windows 2000. Maybe that's when they completely did away with the 16-bit architecture. I know there was a point they did that because it was uh, big in the news at the time. And a lot of people were saying they just couldn't run their old apps and stuff. Uh, so there was a lot of compatibility issues with Windows 2000, I think it was, uh, which would have been Windows NT 5. Um, okay, I'll just put in the disc. Why are you still hungry? Right, 
Disk 11. You happy now? You thought, yep, thank you, good. Um, I just had to stop when I saw my favorite vintage process bar. <laughs> yes, indeed, Eo. Um, I heard that someone had that Sinclair. Uh, Timex Sinclair 1000, yep, yep. I wonder if there's a Timex Sinclair 1000 emulator, probably. Oh, excuse me. Right, so we're we're coming up to the last point of failure. No, we're not. No, we're not. I keep remembering disk 11 as a failure point but it wasn't after disk 11 it started asking for disk 0 again if I remember correctly So Windows NT was developed alongside OS2. Well, it, it turns out the Windows NT was OS2, um, but for some reason they diverged. So apparently IBM and uh, and someone in this chat told me, I didn't know this before, um, IBM and, uh, and Microsoft had a code-sharing deal that went into their NT technology. So I, I, honestly, I thought there were two rival systems. But apparently, um, OS2 Warp's main mandate was uh, being Windows 3.1 compatible and um, Unix compatible and, and POSIX compatible. Uh, remove the disk, insert the installation disk. There we go. So we're back to where we were. Um, I suspect the drive will remain unbootable. I suspect there's something I'm not doing um, that I should be doing. Yes, thumbs up. Please, please send positive wishes. Computers really respond to hope. <laughs> oh, there we go. Um, no, uh, okay, so I didn't finish reading this last time. OS2 Warp can automatically detect and allocate resources for devices using installation. Uh, during installation. Uh, you use Win, uh, sorry, hardware manager to determine system information on physical devices, device drivers, and resources they use. Now, hardware manager is interesting because Microsoft had this device manager thing. I wonder if they were related. <laughs> right, so we're now on disk one. OS2 needs you to lay hands and chant casting the demon out. Yes, unfortunately the exorcist is out of town right now, so I must remain demon infested. Please leave my box, thy Bill Gates of Doom. <laughs> this is the best stream I've seen all years. Kudos, I'm glad you're enjoying it. I, so I, I'm not even reliving memory lane here because I never dealt with OS2 warp, as you can see from my complete amateurish attempt to try and install this thing. <laughs> this is more like a user review from 20 years ago. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, so OS2, OS2 warp is several computers in one. It is like having several computers working for you. You can send a fax, print a spreadsheet, and write a letter all at the same time. I kind of want to see that. Did the guy have three separate keyboards all plugged into the computer? Was sort of trying to send a, a fax with his nose, writing a, uh, printing a spreadsheet with uh, his other hand, and typing on the other keyboard? 
Or is this a case of you sent a fax, then you went into a spreadsheet and you started the printing, and then you went in and started writing a letter? That's probably the workflow they're talking about. Though I do like the idea of this guy with two keyboards and a broom up his arse trying to do three things at the same time. <laughs> I'm going to install Windows 98 later. I don't blame you. <laughs> Please do it from floppy disks just so you can share my pain. <laughs> oh, right, disk two. This, this was the point of failure. It's going to ask me to reboot... And then it will be a case of... Okay, well, come on. It keeps asking me to insert the disk twice. I don't know why it does that. It just, it just, it just wants me to suffer now. Um, what was I going to say? I can't remember. I've completely lost my trail of thought. It reminds me to upgrade my Slackware to version 15. I never used Slackware very much either. I, I used, uh, not back in those days, I didn't come into um, Linux until uh, probably the mid-2000s. Um, I think it was Red Hat. Red Hat and Susie were the, um, the ones I got off the front of a magazine and tried installing on my computer. Yeah, make a whole day of it. I, I, if this channel ever gets successful and starts making actual money, um, I will buy a 486 vintage machine, do it up, and just do a bunch of these installing old software videos. <laughs> okay, this, 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 is, this, is, this is the point of no return, guys. Um, so we're now ejecting A. Now I'm going to read the screen. Remove disk from A. Press enter to continue with installation. It's either going to work now or it's going to fail. Let's find out. We are rebooting. After OS2, I completely dropped Windows. Oh, it's still not loading. So this is now fat. Okay. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay. Um, right, there must be a way of making the boot sector work. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to try and find out. I hope you're enjoying this live stream of man who cannot install operating system. <laughs> Uh, yes, I set it. Yes, I definitely set it as a primary disk, um, but it wouldn't give me the option to. Uh, okay, fine. You can have the other disk. Uh, disk. Uh, it wouldn't give me the option to install the boot manager. So I don't know what's going on there. Kind of assume it would do it automatically, but of course it, it doesn't. <laughs> This, this 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 isn't an intuitive user friendly experience. Let's put it that way. Uh, but it, it said it, it said it was startable, so I'm assuming it's startable. <laughs> the new AMD driver corrupted Windows. Wow, nice job, AMD. I mean, it's a very pretty logo. Let's just pretend I installed the operating system and this is all it does. End of stream. Bye-bye. Oh, I just wish it had, like... Um, I, did, I wish I didn't have to put in three floppy disks just to get to the basic um, installation screen. Or the tools. Uh, three. And that's disk at two. I want, sorry. Disk, change disk. I'm pushing the wrong one. Yep, Steph, always make a backup of your BIOS. Unless you don't want to. Or you've got a dual BIOS setup. 
Oh, okay. I would love to try I, I, uh, sorry, IBM um, Aptiva, but I'm just not getting that far. <laughs> I am absolutely failing at this completely. It's so interesting how bad I am. Uh, right, I'm just going to go to Command Prompt. And I'm going to go directly into FDisk and see if my changing it to FAT32 gives me more options. So it says it's startable. Again, I just don't have any options. It's not giving me the ability to do anything. I, I've literally got the option to delete petition and that's it. There's nothing here that says star if bootable. It says it's startable. There is no install boot manager feature. Uh, can you check with the USB version partition manager if the setup is good? Um, not really, because I would have to download another boot disk um, and download an old partition manager. Something like Partition Magic might work, I suppose, but I don't have a copy. Uh, try install the boot manager in the... Yeah, I'll try that. See, it's, it's just greyed out. I've got one option. Delete partition... And <laughs> delete petition. Um, I got select, which is enter, that's fine, and exit. Those are my only options. So F disk is basically F'd up. Um, wasn't there a sysc command like in DOS? Yes, there is. Um, you know what? That is actually worth a try. Let, let's see if there is a sys command. Nope. There is no sys command. So what we have available is everything on screen here. We have CMD, RMView, CBoot, CD boot, okay. Um, point HDD, uh, FDIS.com, uh, SysInst1. We have um, SysInst2. You know what? We'll try SysInst one and I'm going to take it back to basics didn't like that <laughs> I did not like that at all <laughs> oh right is there anything on drive I mean we've definitely got files on drive C so do we have OS2 what's in OS2 let's have a look Oops, it helps me when you type things properly. So, okay, so we do have some more commands here. So, sys, no, there's no sys there. But it does seem to be largely DOS-based. I don't know why I'm trying to expand this window. It's DOS. There is no expanding it. Um, there's, there's a format here. Deal with a format, um, actually. Yeah, disk locked or used by another process. Um, uh, shouldn't the boot drive be... <laughs> I started off with high-performance file system, and then I converted it to FAT on the basis that neither of them works. Um, I suppose another thing I could try is a different installation method. Um, let's see if there's a later version that I might be able to use. Uh, so yes, I have tried both file systems. Neither are yielding um, the expected result. So IBM have managed to make a very unintuitive operating system, in my opinion. Win D. Set boot is a command. You know what? I will give it a go. You know what? You're right. There's set boot is a command. Set boot enables boot manager to be set up for hard disk. Okay. Query is currently set up. Infamous. 
current set startup. So set boot Q. Right. Boot ma you know what? Thank you, mate. You may have put me on the right track here. Um, so boot manager is not installed. Sets timeout, no. Is there a way of installing it? Right, sets boot mode to normal mode. So let's try set boot um, C colon. No, I don't need to put C colon. Set boot um, M. N? Is it? Okay, so M. I assume that's a slash there. So slash M and N. Is that right? Normal. Uh, oh, this, this, this isn't a legacy boot situation because I'm emulating it. So this is uh, this is old hardware. Um, shuts down restart system. Sets a partition of logical drive. Uh, I'm going to assume. Uh, so it's, uh, right, okay, so it just says boot. So how do I install it? That's the question. Queries, no queries, set system index to zero, sets petition or logical drive defined by name. So maybe I need to do that. So it just says boot manager not installed. Uh, set boot. Okay. Uh, there was an option in that blue menu before boot menu. No, there wasn't. Um... Right, so set boot enables boot manager to be set up for a hard drive. So that implies that it would actually install the boot manager. So I'm going to do a Google. Um, yes, I'm fairly sure. Uh, set boot enables boot manager. Right, how to install boot manager with set boot. Um, OS2 using OS2 boot manager to install multiple operating systems okay um, I think it's creating a 50 meg partition trying to install the boot manager there uh, no I think you're confusing that for um, how Linux tends to work uh, but I manually created everything myself because the easy installation wouldn't work. <laughs> First three installation disks, Windows 3.0, right, notes, Windows R5 installed. <coughs> right, problem. In the example, Windows DOS 95 installed on different partitions, same hard drive. To use following method, use first three boot disks, boot installation. Note example, Windows 3.1, Windows 5 installed in different partition, that's fine. Um, to use the following method, you will need the first three installation disks, DOS installation disk, Windows 3.5, that's fine. Create multiple partitions on the same hard drive. Um, F3, prompt A. At this point, type in F disk. Well, I've done that. Everything's greyed out. Now, actually, what happens if I try F disk from... Um, here instead of the floppy disk. Does that change the options? No, it's not even available. Okay, that's fine. Thank you for sharing the live. I appreciate it. Thank you for sharing my pain. <laughs> um, at this prompt, F disk or start partitioning software. In order to restructure your drive, you want to delete any existing partitions. This destroys the whole process. Be sure to back up. Okay. <sighs> Fine. Okay. We'll, we'll we'll try repartitioning it manually. It means I've got to sit through copying files again. But let, let's let's just destroy this, 
this should give us some options back. Let's destroy this one as well. Give us some options back. Right. Right. Install boot manager. Um, okay, okay. So now we've got a startable there. Um, so does that mean that I create another one? Uh, install boot manager, set values with a petition. Okay, so maybe that's what I was doing wrong. Maybe now I create a petition. And that petition should be 150 meg because I knew that worked last time. Um, so primary, and I will make this one, yep, start or free space, yep, that's fine. And then we will create petition here. That will be a logical extended drive. So that's unformatted. Uh, add to boot menu menu, that's fine. Enter name, um, OS2. Okay, 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 so... Basically, you've got to delete them all, and before you create any operating systems at all, you actually have to create a tiny, tiny, one-byte-size um, partition <laughs> that holds the boot manager. How the hell is anyone supposed to know that the first time around? <laughs> There's literally no instructions. <laughs> now, this will either work or it won't. <laughs> um, so if I tap here, so right, set startup values, that's timer mode advanced that's fine don't care about that um if you apply will it go away um yes i'm, I'm this will i've already formatted the destroy the drive at this point there is no bringing that back change petition names startup values that's fine um remove from boot menu don't want to do that delete petition right um so that one's a startable I assume the C would be startable because that's how Windows works. Clearly, that's not the point. The hit, the the, the case here, uh, which makes sense because Windows NT doesn't really work that way. Okay, I'm going to take it on faith, and I think I've now done it. So take a good look at that configuration because this may be done. Um, can you start over or take this home now? Uh, so I have to basically now save and then start the installation process again. So save and exit. Drive letter change, press control, alt delete. That's fine. Um, now I'm also going to stick in um, the floppy disk I need to boot off. <laughs> and now I will control, alt delete. System, control, alt delete. There we go. <sighs> I'm 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 officially exhausted now. Right, can you start over? Go gone. Can you start over now? If you not safe too late, could save you time. No. The trouble is, once the petition was written, there was no way of creating a petition at the beginning. <laughs> Now, I suppose I could have deleted the petition. Uh, okay, there, there was a couple of things I couldn't do. But this is straightforward, it's simple, and it demonstrates, hopefully, how it should have been done in the first place. And I'll be happy if I achieve that level. And let's face it, I'm just creating more content, so that's great. I'm a streamer. And... I wonder how many experienced um, uh, users are will view this video in years to come going, what are you doing, you moron? Because <laughs> there's no option to install the boot manager on the fast petition on the first layout. Well, I'm hoping I've got, I've got it installed now. If I haven't, then this will really will be the last time. But it, it makes sense that you've got a boot manager installed at the front of the drive that is a traditional place to put them. Um, it also makes sense that then there's a C drive because that is kind of how modern Windows works as well. So this kind of answers some questions if it works. If not, um, I'm out of ideas. There, there's, I'd have to go and look at a YouTube video or something to find out how to properly do it. Um. <laughs> the good thing is I'm getting very expert now changing floppy disks that don't exist. Uh, disk two, come to me. I, 
Uh, it didn't format the disk. Format comes later. You remember being at a trade show when OS2 Warp was just released? Nice. Right, we're going to go for advanced installation. I like controlled at this point. Um, yes, it will be installed to drive C. That's fine. Um, I could probably use a high um, performance file system at this point, but I'm not going to even try it. I'm just going to go with fat. Loading system files. Please wait. Uh, there aren't many discs in this installation at all. Just 40. 40 separate floppy disks. Not including supporting drivers. There is in fact a total of 112 floppy disks in the entire package. But not all of them are installation disks. Um, see, it's giving me a high performance file system right up front. I kind of want to select it now. Right, let's read the screen. A file system manages the information on the petition. The operating system provides two file systems, high performance file allocation table, sorry, the high performance file system and the file allocation table FAT file system. You must select one for the petition where you install OS2 Warp. If you have other petitions on drive, you can format them. I'm just gonna go FAT, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, I feel it's going to trick me. And that paranoia may have made me trick myself. We will find out when it fails. <laughs> to be fair, the, uh, the, the, the difficulty of this installation may well have been a failure point, yes. Windows 95, Windows 3.11, DOS, they all did have one thing in common. They were very smooth, well thought out installation processes. This thing assumes you're an expert. It assumes you know what you're doing and it's not giving enough guidance. Um, you just didn't get this with the Windows 9X family, I have to admit. And we're copying files again. Oh. No, um, because partitioning and formatting are two different things. Um, as long as you're targeting the drive C partition, which it did say um, in the installation screen, it will not be writing to D or the um, booting partition. I hope, <laughs> I hope at this point, I'm not taking anything for granted. I just realised I'm wearing my headphones and I don't actually have any sound coming out of them. Actually, no, there is, that's not true. It does beep to let me know the next thing's there. Um, <laughs> where was the time when installing these OSs in disk? Yeah, exactly. The, 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 this is one saving grace. I don't literally have a pile of 40 floppy disks one of which is failing, which is probably something like disk 28 or something, you know. <laughs> but uh, to be fair, I've actually encountered that before, and it does usually give you an option to ignore. So quite often I'd end up installing Windows with one floppy disk that's broken, and I'll be hitting the ignore button, hoping that that file wasn't essential for Windows operation. And I have actually gotten away with it in the past, doing that thing. Um, and I think I have actually done that, and then I've gone on to another computer, um, found the missing files on that disk that was corrupted, and copied them over manually just to fix it. That is definitely something I've done in the past. <laughs> 
<laughs> but you, 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 you were lucky. If it was a critical file that prevented it from booting, you would actually have to go into DOS and then do these manual file uh, replacements as what I used to call Windows surgery, <laughs> just to get all the files in the right place. <laughs> Yes, first thing I've done, copy all the files, the Novell server as a backup. Yes. <laughs> Dude, you cannot feel stupid when it comes to the installations, because right now I have restarted this installation five freaking times. And not only that, I made the active choice to choose the floppy disk installation method. There is no one in the world more stupid at installations than me at this moment in time. <laughs> Uh. It would have been a better choice, but I made that choice first time round, and someone said it doesn't boot off um, H HPFS. Um, I know FAT boots. It boots DOS. It boots Windows. I know nothing about HPFS, so I decided not to take the risk and go with a file table I know works. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I say I don't trust them anymore because just because they put it as the first option doesn't mean it's the right option. <laughs> it's, there, there's some devious developer here going, let's give them as little information as possible and not care what order anything appears in. Because <laughs> you would have thought, uh, when, when I first went into this, there was an option, easy installation. And it gives you easy disk setup and then easy installation. They do not work. <laughs> it complained at me, and that's why I had to go down the advanced route. But seriously, the um, easy installation should have set up the boot manager. It should have set up the petition, and it should have set up any free space in accordance the way it likes. But it refused to do it. Um, install Windows 95 disks are not alone. Yep. So the Windows 95 installation procedure is not as bad as this. It tended to be very smooth. I've installed Windows 95 so many times from floppy disk. Um, but this, this is just, it's, it, it assumes you know too much. Um, which is fine, but at the same time it's not. Because you do need to assume that the user will forget something, can't remember something. And this was a time before the internet was invented. Well, no, the internet was around, but you couldn't just pick up your phone and go look something up. <laughs> yes, there was probably a big, thick manual that came with this, to be fair, which I don't have. Um, yes, I, I can download the OS2 warp, but the whole point of this um, live for me was to... Um, introduce the experience of installing something on an old computer using the floppy disk method. I could have used the ISO and this would have been so much quicker, but this is actually hitting my goal right now, which is to show the pitfalls, um, the frustration, uh, the difficulty and the patience you need to actually sit there and swap out floppy disks because we all say that anyone in the tech field will look at a young person and they'll go oh you think you got it hard do you well i had to install software from a stack of floppy disks this high and now you can refer them to this live video which will go up on um um youtube my youtube channel and then you'll be able to take any young person and show them the horror <laughs> of trying to install OS2 warp on a 486 computer. <laughs> yes, exactly. The early 90s feeling. <laughs> How many headache killers have you in next line there? Um, I am a software developer, so I do have a packet of ibuprofen somewhere. But because I'm also um, a guy who plays with electronics, my desk literally has um, half-built uh, tricorder projects. It's got a big bunch of, um, of buzzers. Um, I have um, uh, an air mouse that I'm developing with 
3D printed handle. I've got like reels of cables. Um, so if there are some headache pills, they're under something and I don't... Ah! No, no, no. You know what? I do have a box of headache pills. And they're empty. That should tell you everything you need to know. <laughs> oh. Well, I, I, we're not exactly halfway through because you're not really halfway through because you've already loaded up the first three discs and else. Oh no. Yeah. This isn't this is a fake halfway through. Um I really hope this works. And not do I, I I have said, and this is another thing, this is another thing, this is a mentality of the nineties computer technician. Every time it failed, you would sit there and go, This is the last time. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm done with it. And then you you sort of have an idea, well, maybe if I try this thing, the next installation will work. And you end up um, five times in a row going, if this doesn't work, I'm going to not do this anymore. I'm just going to walk away. But there is just something about having spent this amount of time f swapping floppy disks that means you have to see it through. You have to get this thing working. Otherwise, you have wasted all that time achieving nothing. <laughs> So as I say right now, um, this is the last time. I will no longer be doing this. I will end the live. The chances are when I get to it and there's an error, I'll go, but hang on a moment, maybe if I do this. <laughs> and it becomes a vicious cycle of um, um, masochistic behaviour. You're just punishing yourself for no reason. <laughs> IPX protocol. I remember the IPX protocol. I also remember the TCP IP stack. Um, I remember having to reinstall um, uh, the, the network devices in order, um, having to remove them and reinstall them to get your modem working again. Um, is Doctor Who's K9 a bad phrase here? It keeps omitting my text. Oh, I don't know why it would be. <laughs> I certainly don't have K9 set up in any way as a, as a bad word. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. it. It lessens the pain in my heart that even if I don't get OS2 warp installed, I've at least got some extra followers out of this travesty. <laughs> oh, you are presently looking into this face of sanity slipping past I can't even form the words. I'm normally quite poetic with my language, but right now my brain is turning to jelly. Uh, da, 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 da. Right, disc six. Oh. The version 3.x version, not high. No, this is version four. This is one of the latest versions they did, and it's this not user-friendly. I'm almost tempted, um, uh, and I may do this next weekend, to install OS2 version 2, just to see what the difference in installation experiences were. Was it worse? Were things better explained? Was it better in some way? It will be genuinely interesting to install all the different versions <laughs> and see if they actually got worse throughout the installation processes. Or if the earlier ones were better. Uh, NDS. I vaguely remember NDS. I've seen NDS. Can't remember what it was in oh, I know it was in relation to networking, but I can't remember the purpose. Was it network device services? Yeah, network device services. Um, what streaming are you using is uh, OBS. I'm using um, um, TikTok Live Studio, and yeah, it works pretty well. It's okay. 
Um, Netware directory services. Netware. Thank you. Netware. Oh, Novella. Yeah, I remember them. My father used to work as um, an IT manager for college, and he used to use Netware stuff. So I, I, I never actually deployed it myself um, because um, we were well into uh, Windows 98 um, when I started going into the professional marketplace. Um, so I just dealt with whatever network services. And, uh, we, ne we never... Yeah, we were kind of moving past the point of token ring networks and stuff and we were going on to um, proper proper networking, I'll call it. Oh my gosh, is that OS2 Warp? Jesus, that's like 90 software. Yes, indeed it is. This is OS2 Warp version 4. And I am installing it from floppy disks. Not real floppy disks, I've got a bunch of images, but I'm emulating what it was like to install an entire operating system from floppy disk. And I'm beginning to wonder why <laughs> I chose to do this. <laughs> Because I've had to repeat this installation five times because OS2 Warp is not user-friendly to install for someone who doesn't know what they're doing. <laughs> I'm currently learning Linux using Docker to set up AdGuard Home and um, searching. Nice. Linux is good. So I, 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 are you by any chance a Linus Tech Tip viewer? Is that why you're saying Linus? <laughs> um, I've set up a version 3.12 Novell servers with clients Windows 3.1 and they boot from a file server like a terminal <laughs> nice network chunk mm. chunky networks if I start saying weird things it's just because this is literally driving sanity from my very soul it really does feel like being in the 90s again. I just... but Perhaps I need to take this video and I need to um, edit it so <laughs> I've got all the old disc sounds. <laughs> um... I do prefer Linux to Windows. I can't decide Ubuntu or Mint. Mint every time. I am in love with Mint. Um, if it was legal to do so, I would probably marry it. Um, Dark Helmet. Yeah, I loved it. The best times. Hi, my first computer was Windows 3.1 in a 486 100 megahertz. Wow, you know what? You had a much nicer computer than I started out with. I had a um, 286... Don't ask me how much RAM I had. I have no idea. But it was using um, a Trident video card. I think it managed to do like 16 colours. I started off with EGA. Mm, you, Mint and... Uh, I suppose they're vaguely the same thing, but the interface you get with Mint versus Ubuntu is night and day. Um, plus you get the Cinnamon Edition, you get the um, um, LDXE desktop interface. You just get a choice of, of, of which desktops you want to use. That's his biggest advantage. Um, and of course, it's, it's all Debian-based. Um, Ubuntu t tends to, you know, pretend it's not Debian. They've done a bunch of other work on it, but really it's, it's a Debian-based OS. Four eight six thirty three was my first until upgraded to a DX sixty six. Um, I had a two eight six machine. We upgraded to a three eight six SX processor. I was too young to remember the precise thing of uh, the precise um, settings of it. I'm pretty sure we transferred our ISA Trident card from the two eight six into the three eight six machine. Um, I can't remember what graphics card. We had that thing for a long... I think that may have gone through several generations of computer. Uh, but it can't have, because when we had a 486, and it was a 486 
33 megahertz SX. And I remember this very vividly because there was a game I couldn't play because it didn't have DX. It didn't have a floating point uh, math coprocessor on it. So <laughs> I, I, I couldn't play this game. Um, and then I think I went on to the uh, DX50. Um, then I got my own personal first machine because this was a family machine we were upgrading. Um, and it was a... Uh, P150 Cyrix IBM chip, which could not play Quake very well. I remember being very disappointed that Quake performed like pants on the thing, because again, it had a very weak floating point um, coprocessor. And I think after that, I can't remember, I probably went on AMD. But I remember the marketing campaign of the Cyrix 150 Plus, or P150 Plus, because it was supposed to be equivalent to a Pentium 150, but it was really clocked at 120 megahertz. It did, it did. Um, but it was Cyrix's fault because they just didn't put a decent FPU in it. Uh, Ubuntu takes me... Right, Ubuntu takes... Ah... Ubuntu likes to work on Debian, but not share their work with people um, they took the OS from. Yeah, that was, sounds about right. Um, my first was a Pentium 100, a trying to play Half-Life. I can't remember the first Pentiums I had. I'm very sure it was a Pentium 75. But it almost certainly wasn't a Pentium. I didn't have the money for Intel stuff back then, so it would almost certainly be an AMD equivalent. I vaguely remember an AMD 166. But I, I know, I, I, I can't remember. I remember the ones that I shared with my brothers more than the ones I had when I moved out. Probably because I upgraded the thing so many times when I had a wage um, that it never really was the same thing for very long. Uh, right, disc 9... Um, I am an e-learning designer and a, um, a front-end developer. Um, right, so let's, let's catch up on some of these measures. Pentium 1, um, I use Atlas OS. Bad, bad. I don't like Atlas OS. Um, got some uh, blue screens and thought it was Atlas, but I think it's um, M supports Adobe Type 1 fonts. Okay, sorry. Uh, I've got too many messages. Um, uh, did you try using Windows XP as a daily driver in 2021 plus? No. No, I had well moved on from XP. I, I, I was never actually a major fan of XP. I thought the interface was too kiddie because it was like this bright blue bar and this green button. So I actually stayed on Windows 2000 for the majority of the time Windows XP was available. And then I upgraded to Windows Vista. But I, at the time, I, I just refused to use the thing. I thought it was, it was just, I thought it was just a Windows 2000 with a stupid skin on it. <laughs> yes, um, so, uh, Quake did kill Cyrix. Um, he remembers those CPUs. Uh, if you don't mind sharing what kind of work, well, I'll ask that one. Before Cyrix was king, yes, it was. Used to love Doom. Still love Doom. My only problem with Doom is if I play it too long, it makes me feel motion sick. And it always has done. Um, disc 9. <laughs> Thank you for prompting me. <laughs> I had AMD overclocked. Oh, yes. I remember overclocking the uh, the K6 series. Um, I never actually toasted anything, but uh, I may have come close a few times. Um, what's Atlas OS? Atlas OS is a... Um, a legal copy of Windows that has been modified to use as few resources as possible. Now, I don't mind modded Windows where you reduce this down the system requirements. My objection is when they give you an entire ISO of someone else's operating system, because I just don't trust the motivation behind that, and I don't trust that the files are all sanitary. Um, let's put in disk 10. So it is, it's, it's, it is a stripped version, but it does things like remove Defender. 
um, and uh, file validator, a lot of security things. Um, but I, I just do not trust it and I do not recommend it. And I made a whole video that got like a million views basically saying how I don't trust this thing. And I reposted it three times just to annoy people. But it got a million views every time. So it's probably the most popular video on my channel. I tossed an AMD K. Oh, see, you were more advanced than me. I think I was on the 300. Basically, throughout my entire young adult life, if there was a base level, entry level chip, that was what was in my system. I was on i3s. I was on the very slowest versions of everything <laughs> and always coveting. Um, the, 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 I was definitely on the K6 300. I remember that. Um, and when Voodoo Graphics came out, I didn't go for a Voodoo card. It was too expensive. I went for their rival, Power VR. <laughs> so I, I, every everything that everyone else jumped on, I always ended up getting the cheap knockoff version because I couldn't afford. Uh, well, uh, to be fair, I could have afforded it if I tried, but I was always of the mindset of I want the best bang for buck. Um, everyone else jumps on the i7 going, oh, it's amazing, look how fast it is. And I'll be on the i3, <laughs> lowest version, going, well, my game works fine. Yes, I don't get have the frame rate, but I don't care because it works. <laughs> What's the difference between genuine Windows version and Atlas version? They both monitor you. Um, no, uh, the whole point is that um, Atlas OS shouldn't be monitoring you because all that stuff is stripped out. But that doesn't mean some Chinese hacker didn't get in there, alter the files, and send all your data to Mother State. Um, you just don't know who's altered those files. Um, Microsoft, or at least, are, are an organization who should be accountable. So, yeah. Um, I don't mod games consoles. Uh, no, actually, no, I'll tell a lie. I have modded the um, Wii with homebrew so uh, I can basically run whatever I like on that now and I run everything off a um, a uh, USB disc oh, we're getting to the point now where I'm going to shoot myself if it reboots and tells me it's not bootable <laughs> uh, see I, I've, I've, I've never actually owned an Nvidia card I always went for the cheaper AMD cards. This has been the theme of my life. This laptop is the first time I've ever owned an NVIDIA card. <clears throat> no, I tell a lie. I did have an NVIDIA card. I had the 8800 GTS. That was my last NVIDIA card before this laptop. What are you installing here? I think I'm too young to know what OS this is. Well, I'm going to give you a tip. If you look at the top of the screen, it has the word installing. And then next to that word, it has the name of the operating system. And I'm not being sarcastic. I'm just having some fun. It's called OS2 Warp. It's from IBM and it was released in 1996. And as you can see here, it says OS2 Warpgate is an agent that provides step-by-step -step insistence for select system tasks, such as connecting to a network printer. My first AMD card was a 6800 XT. Um, my first AMD card was an ATI card. I can't remember which card it was. I think it was one of the Pro Raid series. And I think I nicked it off a machine from work. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Um, I think it was probably the Rage Pro, if I remember correctly. I remember running Tomb Raider on it, um, and it wasn't one of the first. I think it was one. Of, I think it was Tomb Raider, um, the fourth one in the series, Angel something. Um, may have my time mixed up there. Uh, but yes, th this is IBM OS2 Warp, which apparently we discovered throughout the course of this entire live um, is actually Windows NT, because it turned out that IBM and Microsoft were doing a code sharing deal at the time. And Windows NT um, 2 was actually going to be um, 
NT OS2 Warp 2 or something like that. Oh, I remember the TNT2 card. I don't think I own one, though. I might have. I can't remember. But it is a very familiar name. But the trouble is, um, around 1999... I was working for a computer building company and I must have built like 1,500 computers over my career there. So I've, I've got this whole period of time where I honestly can't remember what my actual computer was because I was building everyone else's and it's just like every day was a new computer. <laughs> so I can't remember what I was running in those years. It all sort of blurs into one. Right, so this is the point... Um, where we're going to go through disk 0, 1, 3 again. And then it's going to ask me to reboot. And then I'm going to cry because the OS still won't be bootable. And I, and I will have lost all self-worth. <clears throat> my first AMD 486DX66 was clock times 2. Um, then doom goes fast. I remember that. Now, if you want a real trip down memory lane, who remembers the turbo button? And why did it even exist? <laughs> why was you not... Actually, the, the reason the turbo button existed at the time was because um, uh, uh, some games uh, were not real-time clock locked. They were locked to the number of cycles you could do. So quite often, some old games and software would run too fast because your computer was too powerful. So you could actually turn the turbo button off and slow down your machine. And disk one. Did it do anything for many processors apart from light on the case? Yeah, it, it, it reduced it down. Um, when you play Duke Nukem and press the turbo button, yeah, you go from uh, 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 to beautiful motion. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it depends on the machine. On the, on the um, 486 machine I had, if you hit the turbo button, it will go up to 50 hertz uh, or megahertz. And if you turn it off, it will go down to 25. So it usually halved whatever your cycle count was. But I remember having a turbo button on the 386 machine because there was... Um, um, 8086 programs and 286 programs that ran too fast on a 386 processor. <laughs> I almost wish I could get one of those old games that ran too fast and just see how ridiculous they are on a new computer. Um, then in the year 1999, Compact came with a very good line of computers. No turbo button anymore. Compact computers were everywhere. They really were. Compact, uh, Compact Packard, Bell. Um, what other brand names? Dell was around at the time. Um, but I, I was always into bespoke, so I never ever bought uh, a pre-made computer unless it was a laptop. And to be honest, if I could build my own laptops easily and select my own hardware, I definitely would. Um, there, there have been some attempts to do that over the years, but they've not really been very good. Um, you don't get the upgrade upgradability. I suppose um, Framework is probably the only company that's coming close to doing that right now. Gateway Ovelli, I remember. Oh yeah, Tiny, I remember Tiny as well. RM Nimbus was a thing. Or RM, I should say. Um, how else? I used to have an R R RM Nimbus. It had CGA graphics. It, it, was, it was quite funny. The RM Nimbus was a, uh, an IBM-compatible machine. 
but it was compatible with um, BBC Basic as well. So it was quite popular in education. And the reason I got my hands in it is because my father was working at a college at the time. So he basically got whatever was big in education and, and kind of brought a spare one home every so often. It's how I ended up with a, a BBC Master in my own bedroom. Um, I never had um, uh, ZX Spectrum or games consoles or anything like that. It was always whatever educational machine my father could grab his hands on. <laughs> Uh, we used to. Uh, he he once um, brought home a major haul of Osborne two computers, which were portable or luggable, I should say. Um, uh, and we used to play with CPM. Uh, we actually had better computers at the time, but it was just fascinating playing with these portable computers. You could sort of lug to different rooms. <laughs> uh, which which one am I on now? Okay, so remove the disc. Right. Okay. Now, guys. Guys, we are at the crisis point. Will the computer boot? I am now ejecting A and I am going to press enter to continue the installation. I admire your faith, Toshiba. They're another brand. I miss the sound of real... Oh, for frick's sake. Guess what, guys? It didn't boot. Oh, yeah, I will try going to set boot now. It, it can't hurt at this point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do have the boot manager installed so yes uh, th that is the next logical thing it's just <laughs> that's why <I've laughs> I, you know what I, I am happy to wh wh when it fails the first few times I'm happy to say I am an idiot I don't understand why this doesn't work because I lack the knowledge. But I think we've been through this cycle enough times now to say that this is not intuitive. Uh, it's nothing to do with the BIOS, don't worry. It's nothing to do with that. Um, oh, actually. Bloody hell. You know what? It may actually be the BIOS. I just remembered something. you got to do a manual disk check on this one, haven't you? I've been assuming that it knows... But it's been finding it. How has OS2 Warp been finding and writing to a hard drive that the BIOS isn't recognising? How is that possible? You know what, if this turns out to be the reason, I'm actually going to be impressed that it found a drive that doesn't exist and annoyed that it wrote to a drive that doesn't exist. Because if the BIOS isn't finding it, how is OS2 Warp finding it? Right, I'm going to save this now. If this turns out to be the reason, I'm actually going to be slightly annoyed. <laughs> oh, if someone wants to pay me to do it. Right, selected petition is not formatted. Hit any key. It still won't boot. <laughs> but you know what? It's finding the boot manager. 
this is some kind of progress. This this is this is a comedy of farces. <laughs> oh jeez. Uh right. Petition is not formatted here, Nikki. Well, it, it has found the boot manager because it's loading the boot manager, but it's not finding the disk. Um, no selected option time. Uh, and to select boot. Well, you know what? I'm going to try booting from there. I'm going to try um, select drive. Uh, I don't know. I will see if the files are there at least. Right. So let's. Um... <laughs> Oh, right. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. It makes my pain worth it. <laughs> right, so I'm booting from the floppy disk now just so I can access the, um, the DOS level tools. And I'm going to try running select boot, see if I can fix the errors from there. But wouldn't it be annoying... If every time I installed this, it was installing perfectly with no issues whatsoever. I just hadn't set it in the BIOS. <laughs> and someone did. I will I'll admit to this. Someone pointed out the BIOS a very long time ago and I dismissed it because I'm thinking modern BIOS is where it just detects hard drives automatically. Uh, and I have I've actually been caught by this once before, so there's no excuse for me not remembering. I have to do a manual check. Uh. And this is where the phrase "error has occurred between chair and keyboard" comes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna try. Um, I'm gonna try set boot now, and I, I may try one more time now that the BIOS thing has come to light to try and do a standard install. I may even try to do an easy no, because that and or maybe the easy installation was failing because it was. I don't know, but I, I'm still confused as to how OS2 Warp knew there was a hard drive. When the hard drive wasn't available in the BIOS. What's it doing? Does it just bypass the BIOS? Does it do its own manual check? How does that work? Surely it should have gone. Can't find hard drive. But it was finding the hard drive. Yeah, new BIOSes do literally do everything for you now, I have to admit. Um, I, I have gotten um, lazy when it comes to BIOSes. Doesn't even think of it as a point of failure these days. Which, you know, it, it goes to show the improvements of technology. Exactly. But this is this is another very familiar feeling. You get angry at software. You get angry. You get angry. Then you realise it's one silly thing you didn't think to do, and the software was working this entire time. <laughs> uh, right. This command prompt and cell boot. Yep. So that will be on C. So the files are all there. We need to go into OS2 warp. And we need to go cell boot. Uh, now I need to do set boot. Why am I saying cell boot? Set boot slash question mark. Now. It hasn't rejected it. So now I'm going to go set boot and I'm going to go Q mode is normal 
index system zero none. Okay. So do I need to set system? I look Google some problem other person jumping in says all boot files that must be a 1024 size. Yeah, that makes sense. And I could just reboot it, see if this works. I, I'm, I'm going to obey one of the cardinal rules of troubleshooting, which is do not try a bunch of fixes all at once because then you'll never know what worked. So I'm just going to reboot this one and eject a system control or delete. Let's see if this works. Now, what's really weird is it's finding the petition, but it's saying it's not formatted. Let's try looking up that error. Right, selected partition is not formatted. OS2 warp. Right, using LVM, I create a boot prime primary HPFS partition on disk two, having booted from disk one, installed a minimum OS to it. Right, so that's not related to what I want. Um, I think you need to set um, prime on the, uh, uh, yeah, I might need to set bootable. No, because it's starting the boot manager, that's what I wanted. I need this boot manager. So this is something to do with an entry, I'm sure. Though you were right on the bio, so... Uh, okay. Hmm... There's nothing on Google that really matches it. Trouble is, I don't suppose many people are searching for this particular problem. It is a logical drive. I definitely made it a logical drive. Um, but it didn't give me an option for primary. It was, it was uh, no, 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 it was extended logical drive. Um, and then it was primary. No, I definitely set it up as a primary. I know that. Because uh, logical drive was drive D. Uh, it wasn't set to startable. There wasn't an active option. Um, because that's a Windows thing. Yeah, let's see if I can access um, F disk. Maybe that will do the trick. And right, this will be the last one. Then it's you know, it's, it's been about three hours now and ten minutes, so uh, um, I will have to come back on a new live and try this again. Maybe I'll do it next weekend, though. My wife is coming back from Ghana, so I may not have time. And it's been interesting. I've been able to reminisce. I probably am nearly there.
But it, again, it's just interesting that it wasn't finding it in the BIOS, but it was definitely writing to the hard drive. And more importantly, more importantly, I was able to access the hard drive by typing C colon. Uh, did I put the wrong disk in? There we go. I don't know if it altered BIOS. I think it bypassed BIOS. I didn't even know that was possible, to be honest. I think it just ignored it and went, oh, I don't care what you say, a BIOS. I know there's a hard drive here. Because every tool has been finding it. So that is bizarre, and that's what's thrown me off the entire time, is it was finding a hard drive it shouldn't have been able to see in the first place. So, of course, the BIOS wasn't calling the boot manager because it didn't know the drive existed. <laughs> but once you booted into the, um, the, 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 the OS software, it was like, uh, yeah, yeah, there's a hard drive here, I can write to this, there's no, no problem, man, everything's fine. <laughs> So yeah, I've learned something new about tech. I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> but if nothing else, this has been a fantastic demonstration of what it's like to go through installing an OS using floppy disks and failing to install an OS using floppy sticks the floppy disks and the amount of time it takes when every single little um, error punishes you with a long sequence of flopping disks <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to sleep now just thinking the word floppy disks uh, hi the real fluff how's it going I am attempting very poorly to install IBM OS2 Warp, which so far has defied all logic by detecting a hard drive that the BIOS itself wasn't set up to use. Meaning that I have literally tried to install this thing five times now using a, a series of 11 floppy disks on each cycle. <laughs> oh dear. Right, F disk. So, yeah, it's, it's marked as bootable. It is a primary. But it's also got... Now, that's interesting. It's reporting the drive twice. I reckon now it's because we installed it, but it didn't recognise the drive. Well, it recognised the drive and it installed the drive. But now it's recognizing the drive twice because the BIOS is now revealing the drive. So how the hell does that work? <laughs> it's listing the same hard drive twice. Nothing available. They're, they're, you can't delete petitions or anything. You can delete these ones. Yeah, it's, 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 it's literally listed twice. We got that one there. Then we got primary here. So it's, it's, it's listing these two petitions effectively twice, I think. Because this is just, say, free space. Nothing I can do with that free space.
I think he's messed up the file allocation tables because when I, I installed this, it, um, it, it was finding the hard drive, but he wasn't going through the BIOS to find the hard drive. And now the BIOS is available. I'm trying to think if there's a way I can actually save those files. Now I've got to delete the petitions again, I'm sure. Yeah, so if I go here, there's no option to delete it. So I think it's seeing this as like, it's probably written the file allocation table so weirdly because it wasn't going through the BIOS, or the BIOS is now saying there's a hard drive, and now the software is finding the old hard drive it wrote. So, yeah, I think this is a re reinstall. Right, I think the safest thing to do is to remove this hard drive entirely and replace it with a fresh one. Because who knows what it's actually written to that file now because it was finding a hard drive that didn't exist. And I think on that basis, I'm actually going to end the live because it's already been three hours and 15 minutes. But I think I see a way forward. So I will start another live fresh and um, I will apply my theory then. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to completely delete this hard drive file. I am going to uh, I say that there's, there's no startup or anything there. Uh, I, I can delete those petitions, but when I do, it still leaves this. So, yeah. It's not even giving me the option to create new ones now. So, yeah, just, just, this is where I'll just nuke the hard drive and start again. So, anyway, I, I, thank you for joining me on this journey of troubleshooting. We didn't actually get to reminisce over OS2 warp starting, but we certainly had a journey. Um, mostly a comedy of errors on my part for not seeing very early on that the BIOS needed to take the hard drive. But we have... Um, we, we have discovered... Yeah, actually, you know what? I It will be interesting. I, I'm going to try that. I Just out of curiosity, because I have to. No, no, I'm, I'm going to draw the line here. I'm sorry. I know I'm being indecisive. Um, I'm going to start a live fresh next time. And we will basically pick up from where we left off. I will try the easy installation. This time, the easy installation will be done with the BIOS being able to find the hard drive in question. And we will see if the easy installation then throws up the errors. Because maybe that has been um, why this software has been so hard to install is just because. But again, it's just so interesting to me. It's genuinely interesting that it was finding a hard drive the BIOS was not set up to detect. I don't know how that happened. Um... I don't think it should have happened, and it is co completely what threw us off this entire thing. So maybe the next live will be, oh my gosh, the installation process is so amazingly easy. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave it there, guys. So thanks for joining me. It has been a journey. Um, it has definitely demonstrated what it's like to install something from floppy drives on an old machine and what it's like to encounter issues and be punished time and time again when you're trying to fix things. Um, but I think it's been relatively um, entertaining. Uh, right, someone says here, minimum um, 486.33 or higher, 12 meg, 16 meg, memory and warp. Yes, um, I read those and I went uh, DX66 or DX266 processor with 32 meg um, just to make sure I had double the resources. Uh, but yeah, anyway, thanks for joining me, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this live. Um, I've certainly experienced... Uh, experienced a plethora of human emotions including feeling like a dumbass 
<laughs> which is very normal as life as a computer technician back in the 90s. So thanks again, guys. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Sunday.